Nintendo. Wow. As a wise man once said, you can always judge a video game by its title screen. And this game, that is called Danky Kang, and features a blue ape that collects rings, is one of the best games ever made. That, and it favors both the competitive hardcore gamer and the casual gamer, never being too difficult, but having challenging levels. This is Donkey Kong for the arcades, which is probably the hardest game I've ever played. <laughs> and everything I just said was a complete lie, because it's actually very hard. Anyway, hey guys and gals, I'm Pal, and welcome back to Earthbound. Last episode, we beat up some sharks, and this time, we're going to be heading through those doors and beating up their leader. Let's go, but just wait one second. Uh, there's one thing I'd like to get out of the way before we continue, and that is the last two episodes were pre-recorded, so I wasn't able to look at the results of my question concerning the soundstone. Now that I have, I can comment on them. I know this has been a decision three, three episodes in the running, but just stick with me. Uh, the comments were pretty one-sided. There was only one, de one decision. Yeah, there was only one decision that they seemed to favor, and that was of me uh, carrying, following through with the soundstone exploit. And you can see by the fact that it's not in my inventory that I am doing so. There was one comment that said that uh, the soundstone is technically a key item, so since it's relevant to the story, it shouldn't take up any inventory space. Sort of like how the ATM card shouldn't. And you're completely right. The comments were completely right. It makes sense that the soundstone shouldn't take up inventory space, so let's just imagine that Ness is carrying the soundstone with him, but it's not filling up his pockets because he's keeping it in, in his hat or his mouth or somewhere. We don't know where Ness is keeping it, but it, it's on his person somewhere, and let's leave it at that. So, let's go through these doors and beat up their leader, like I said. There he is. Up front, he's all business. He has sporty sunglasses, a red suit, a red tie, but in the back... Man, there's a party going on. He has all the mohawk, not, not the mohawk, the mullet going on. Mmm. I feel like I've known him all my life. In fact... Hi, Frank. How are you? I'm Frank. You are? Come on, can't you at least say your name? And apparently, me running across a field to do to hug him means that we're going to do battle because he doesn't want my hugs and he will keep me at knife point length. Uh, besides the fact that the Johnny B. Good theme is playing, or song is playing from, well, most people will recognize it from Back to the Future, uh, this battle is pretty electrifying, as we'll just start bashing away with our baseball bat. He'll stab at us with his knife, but we'll hit it right back with our cracked bat, giving him splinters on the face area. Uh, this is pretty much just a bash fest, where we just exchange blows constantly, and it's a test of uh, stamina, not power. And he, because he will be lowering our guts, sure, um, but our damage is pretty much equal. So it all comes down to who can heal up the most, which is me, and who can do a little bit more damage and take more hits. Again, that answer is me. Okay, let's do 25 damage, and Frank became tame, just like that. Very easy. 
Nesgain 50 XP experience. Failproof Frank cannot be beaten. Ha <laughs> ha. And this is Frankenstein Mark II. In the first battle, Frank would lower our guts so that we had a, a lower chance of surviving mortal damage. But in this battle, he will mostly be focused on tanking damage. Uh, he doesn't have that high of damage output, and when he does, when he's about to deal damage, it's telegraphed very easily. Uh, for the first turn, I'd like to heal up. He will always generate a burst of steam before he unleashes an attack, and his attacks are surprisingly weaker than that of his first form. You can see, yeah, 15 damage as opposed to he was doing 21 damage to us earlier, and we're doing more damage to him now. So Frankenstein Mark II isn't really harder. And yeah, okay, if we're going to do uh, smash attacks against him, it's going to be very easy. We only lost 15 HP. This is my first defeat. Failproof Frank is now just failure, Frank. I know you've been asking around, so let me tell you about Giant Step. It seems to be quite a powerful spot. Some kind of special power is stored there that allows certain people to perform wondrous feats. However, a monster sucked up all the energy at that spot. It's difficult to get to Giant Step, that's all I know. I suggest you go collect more information on your own. The entrance, leading, the entrance to the path leading Giant Step is behind the Touring Entertainer Shack. Perkle, the mayor of Onnette, has a key to the shack. Ness, you've become stronger than I. Your adventure is just beginning. Sweet. He <laughs> he died with honor, even though he'd never actually died. Now, if you got low in that battle and you're worried about the sharks, which who, who will still attack you, the sharks will still attack you when you leave the game corner, and even when you go inside, there's a solution to, to that, and that is, if you go inside, then come right back out and talk to Frank again, uh, he'll allow us to rest at his side, for whatever reason, because of course he does. And you can see, now that we're back at full health, and PP, which is really nice that there's a, uh, a location in town that you can rest without having to pay money. Let's see, can we get him to despawn? Okay, that's a start. Okay, good, good, good. Okay, that's, that's a start. Let me just scoot up this way. Run! Yeah! Got past him. And there are no enemies outside? Good, so that, that means I'm free and in the clear. So, the next step is to go see Mayor Perkle. He is directly north of the game corner, right in the town hall. Very easily, uh, easily located. We can go right up there, without any trouble. Yeah. The, the town is very, uh, is situated very well. It's easy to get anywhere because anywhere with, is within walking distance from anywhere. You know, it it's very centrally located. There are lots of snakes and just stray dogs around on it. Is the mayor going to let them just run around doing whatever they want? I'm here to protest. You do that, Mario. I, you show the system that it has no holds on you and the society still dictates the rules. I back you 100%, man. We're in this together, except we're not. Since you beat up the sharks, you're the talk of the town. Mayor Perkle is waiting for you. <laughs> ah. So we're the big man now. The mayor's asking us for tea. Thank you so much for all your help. Yeah, no problem. We, I did your job. You should be paying me your salary. In the next election, please give a speech supporting Mayor Perkle. <laughs> so there's campaign manager, and then there's Mayor Perkle himself. Hey, hey, hey. I'm Mayor B.H. Perkle. It's so nice to meet you. You beat up the town bullies, punched them out big time, kicked their butts, bit their heads off, spit in their eyes, and made them wet their pants. Then you forced them to promise not to make any more trouble. Thank you. What? You want a key to the touring entertainer shack? For someone as great as you, giving you the key could help keep the town peaceful. However, if you encounter a dangerous situation, please don't ask me to take any mo any responsibility. I'll be able to avoid any responsibility, right? Yeah. You're such a smart kid. Here's the key to the shack. Foo. We- No, I'm not calling you fool, Mr. Mayor. I'm- I'm, I'm just saying that you said shack, and- Foo needs to follow Shaq, because that's the full name of the game. You can't just call it Shaq, it's Shaq Foo. Yeah, get it? Sorry, Mr. Mayor, but I'm adamant about this, even though I'm walking away as I say this, that you have to say Foo after Shaq. Mm-hmm. Man, is it crazy to believe that they're making a second Shaq Foo? Like, 
I, I, see, I did not see that coming. It does not make any sense. First of all, they raised money for it. And second of all, Shaq himself said that if the, ga if the game didn't raise enough money to, to be created, that he would fund the rest of it, or the entire thing, which is, like, what? <laughs> that makes no sense. He didn't like the first one, to my knowledge. Why would we, he want a second Shaq Fu game? It's, it's nonsense. Uh, so, northwest of the library is the Touring Entertainer Shack. We saw this earlier, because right up here, uh, up that cliff, that's where we were in the first episode, which is pretty neat. So, foreshadowing. I heard there's a big footprint on the hilltop behind this shack. I haven't seen it myself, it's just a rumor. This shack was locked by someone from City Hall, so we can't use it. The reason it was closed because a punk named Frank may have trashed the place. What a drag. We can't even change our clothes and hotels are too expensive. Huh. Do not enter. That's not what it says, game. It says don't enter. So we can take out our trusty key here. Unlock the door. But before we go in, if we talk to this entertainer again... Wow, you opened the door. Alright. Here's a trinket for good luck. It's the travel charm. And we got the travel charm. And if we go to our equip menu, we can equip this necklace to our bare chest. Because we had nothing on our body before, and this is just a charm, not a shirt, so... We're just wearing a necklace and nothing else on our chest. Uh, the Travel Charm does not change our stats, but grants us an immunity to a certain status ailment, uh, and that status ailment is Paralysis. Which we haven't run into thus far, and we likely won't for some time, so I won't bother explaining it now. But when we run into it, I will make note of it. Okay, I actually would like to fight enemies here. Believe it or not, I want to do a tiny bit more grinding because... The, there's a boss at the end of this cave, and he is difficult, like, nails tough. Uh, he just won't die, and he does a lot of damage, and he has the ability to heal himself and steal our pee-pee. Yeah, and that can get really bad. But in this cave, we have Rowdy Mice, and they have a very high uh, guts, so they will be dealing smash attacks a lot. The smash attacks don't do a ton, they're just about 13 damage, but it's worth noting because if there's a swarm of mice, uh, that's bad. You should probably avoid that swarm and run away. Now, these, uh, what are they, attack slug? Yeah, attack slugs. They're very good to, for, to farm against because they do practically no damage. Yeah, three damage. And they die in one hit, so we can just bash away, and it doesn't matter. We're not using up any PP, and we're just bashing away. And if I recall, they give us a lot of experience, so... It, there's really no reason not to fight these guys. Okay, a mist, okay. Hypnosis Alpha. Now he's able to concentrate to use it, but it doesn't matter because I smashed him into jelly. Wonderful. And 100 experience, that's, that's actually... It's actually not that good. Uh, actually, it's not that bad, actually, because only 27 experience till the next level, so that helped more than I thought. Okay, what's this enemy? Ah, Black Antoid. Now, these guys are very similar to the attack slugs in that they'll appear in swarms, but they are much harder. If you face a swarm of these, you'll have a lot of difficulty because they do about 10 damage apiece and they don't die in one hit. They also have the ability to heal themselves and that's that's annoying. You can see that they're doing a lot, that just one of them is doing a lot of damage. So you want to avoid swarms of these as well until you hit level 8 where you will become an overpowered beast. Offense went up by 2. Oh baby, defense went up by 3. Speed boat went up by 1. Guts went up by 1. Luck went up by 1. Maximum HP went up by 2. Maximum PP went up by 2. Ness realized the power of PSI Rock and Alpha. And that, after I get this present, which has a skip sandwich, that is Ness's signature ability, PSI Rockin'. It's a psychokinetic wave generated by concentration that deals each enemy about 50 points of damage. Yeah. There's another thing that isn't mentioned here, and that is, uh, if there are any psychic shields, enemy psychic shields on, on the battlefield, it will weaken them, possibly destroying them as well. So it's a really good attack, it destroys most of the enemies this early on that you'll face, and is an area of infectability, so it will attack every enemy you see, pretty much. And it has a PP cost of 10, so it, that's a major drawback for it, but... It still isn't that bad. It's it's really nice to get, and actually, I forgot. Ugh. 
I don't want to go back, but I wanted to get hamburgers. Uh. Uh. I actually need hamburgers right now. Yeah. Huh. You know what? I am going to cut because I need hamburgers. I'm not joking. I will need them for uh, the upcoming battle. So, I will be right back, hopefully with a lot more hamburgers. So, yeah. Oops. Okay, that is much better. I spent $60, actually no, $70, on hamburgers, and I got a ton of them. My inventory is in fact full, so... If we encounter an enemy that drops uh, a healing item that I might want, I'm going to have to discard something. Most likely it will be the skip sandwich. Yeah, and actually, I should eat a hamburger right now because I am low. There. Okay, that's, that's nice. Now, I did get the skip sandwich before I cut, and I didn't explain it. Uh, you will, if you eat it, it will restore a very small amount of HP, but it will make you run faster for a short period of time. I think it's like six seconds or something, and that's, that's pretty useful. You can go pretty far in six seconds going that fast, so I will probably use it this episode or next to get out of this place quickly. Uh, actually, you know what? Yeah, I'm gonna fight these guys. Are they attack slugs or antoids? They're attack slugs, okay. But that'll give me a chance to show off PSI Rockin. Which will probably kill every enemy on screen. 86 damage, 56 damage, 92 damage, and 68 damage. Yeah. Pretty good, I have to say. Very, very good. And we should be approaching a level up with that battle. Okay. There's a cave here, though, if memory serves, it's empty except for enemies, okay. Now, the reason I'm not cutting these enemies out is because we're not to that point in the game yet, and it, otherwise, this episode would be pretty short. There wouldn't be much to do, so, eh, I'll, I'll show the battles. Funny thing happened to me recently. Now, this is completely off tangent from anything that's happening right now, but I feel like I should, you know, I, I want to, <laughs> I want to talk about it. Don't. Don't critique my commentary, I want to talk about this because it's really weird. The strangest thing that's happened to me in a, in a long time. I was playing game of League of Legends, because I still play that game, and I may have a pr an addiction to it. I was playing League of Legends, just finished a game, and I was really, you know, I was really content. It was a nice day, beautiful day outside, sort of. And I lean back in my chair and look out my window, because I have a sliding glass door window from my room that goes directly onto my porch. And... I saw something. Now, just backstory, I live sort of in the country, but also sort of not. We see deer and elk on a regular basis, probably four times out of a week. Um, so, me seeing a deer walking across my yard isn't uncommon. We live on four acres of, of property, two acres of, wo of woods and two acres of yard. So, like I said, it is not uncommon to see a deer. But this wasn't a deer, and it also wasn't walking across my yard. It was galloping. You know what I saw? I saw a cow. Yeah, I saw a cow galloping across our yard, like full tilt. This thing was booking it. And it runs all the way across my yard and then goes in the woods on the other side. So it ran completely through my yard. And like, what? Uh, wait, wait, before I continue my story. Ness's level is now level 9. Vitality went up by 1. IQ went up by 1. Maximum HP went up by 13. Maximum PP went up by 3. So this was a very weird occurrence. So I go outside thinking, you know what? I have nothing else to do. I kind of don't want to play any games anymore after seeing that. I want to kill this thing. <laughs> no, I don't want to kill it. I want to fight it and capture it and take it home or something. And it, it's not like a bull or anything. It's just a cow. And so I go out there, see that my neighbor is coming down the road and other neighbors are coming down the road and, you know, it's, it's really weird. So what ends up happening is two of my neighbors go chasing after this cow on horseback and I go chasing after this cow with another one of my neighbors on foot and oh my goodness smash tag stop it stop it mice that's bad it's naughty anyway so we go chasing after it for two hours and though I only live on four acres I'm bordered by ooh ness sheesh I'm bordered by a couple hundred acres of wood so this thing could be anywhere 
and apparently it had gotten through my neighbor's fence, because my neighbor pretty far away owns cows. Got through my neighbor's fence, broke through two fences, one was an electric, one I think was a barbed wire, and went through my fence, and then we chased it into another road, uh, very far away, and because at this point I had gotten in a car and then chased after it, and it ended up in another area, in another cow pasture, broke through their fence, and was perfectly content with the other cows. <laughs> the weirdest weekend I think I've had in a long time. It made no sense. And I... I don't know, I just felt like I should share it, because it's one of those weird things that, you know, maybe Let's Players will talk about, Oh yeah, I got, I got a new computer, and it's a tower, and I'm used to... I'm used to shutting my laptop screen, so I slam my monitor down because it's a tower. Maybe you'll get one of those stories, but you'll never get a story of a Let's Player chasing a cow. That's just very weird. Okay, now for one of my favorite lines in the game. We cannot carry this cookie, so we have to leave it behind. There's been a casualty, folks. Will you leave the cookie behind? Yes. Ness. It's hard for me to say. Ness abandoned the cookie. He abandoned the cookie. I... I don't get how Ness could do such a thing. He abandoned the cookie. He left it to die. It's just laying there, crying out in its pain. And he's just leaving it behind. Instead of just eating it on the go. It's sad. But seriously, that line is hilarious. Ness abandoned the cookie. That's hilarious. Uh, are we almost to... Okay, I do want to get to level 10 before we go much further. That's why I'm not really making any effort to avoid the enemies that there are. Uh, we should attack the Black Antoid first. Yeah. Okay. I, my story's pretty much done. We found the cow, brought it back, and yeah, that's pretty much it. But still, it was really weird. A really weird weekend. Okay. Attack this cat. <laughs> sorry, not this cow. Attack this ant. While, while I'm chasing cows in the land of me, these ants. Ness is beating up ants. Chasing ants. Okay, so, yeah, these, these the ants don't really pose much of a threat, especially since, since we've had a couple of level ups. But there's one good thing that the ants are, are useful for. I didn't mean to attack that. And that is, since they keep calling allies into the battlefield, you don't have to look for random battles. You can just chip away at an enemy, it will call another enemy onto the battlefield, and you can just keep cycling through this, and then eventually get a ton of experience from it. But this battle's pretty much over. This ant's just kind of just delaying his fate of being tame. It makes me wonder, like... Buzzbuds talked about how animals would become hostile because they were affected by Gygus. That means that these are not aliens that we're fighting. These are animals. So Antoids are animals. And it also makes me wonder because it says that this is an eagle land. And I guess it's, it, it's supposed to be America, obviously, but is it not Earth? Is it not, is it like a uh, futuristic Earth, but it's actually in the 1990s, so it's not? Or is it actually Earth? I don't know. I don't really know what I'm trying to ask right now. But what I do know is that, how much PP we have? None, okay. This ledge, its sole purpose is to spawn magic butterflies. Yeah, seriously, that's, that's it. Because if we go back inside and go back again, there should be another- yeah, there's another butterfly there. Which is really useful. It's a free healing station. We can heal up, get more PP back, and possibly farm. And this is what I'm going to do. We have a lot of time left in the episode, which is really neat. So, I'm going to... let's see, how far are we from a level? I'm going to fight until I get one more level. And it's really neat because I can just... oh wow, this will probably... this might do it. I can spam, uh... Uh, uh, rockin' forever because I have a magic butterfly outside. So let's just do this and possibly get all the experience we need. Killed the first one, killed the second one, killed the third one. Probably killed them all. There's no reason why it wouldn't because Ness is awesome. Yeah, so that that's really easy. It's a really easy way to farm this early on. I, I keep saying this early on, but we're really 
we're actually kind of into it now. Yeah, only 50 experience till the next level up. One more enemy would do it. That'll work. Hello. There are three of them there. I don't mind. I can just use Rockin' again. Sweet. I, I did need to get another level up because I am worried about the battle ahead because there is a battle ahead. And it's hard. It is hard. I've died to that, uh, to that enemy in the past many times. Many, many times. Ness's level is now 10. Oh, baby, offense went up by 3. Guts went up by 1. Luck went up by 1. Maximum HP went up by 2. Ness realized the power of healing alpha. Oh, okay. That's kind of unexpected. Uh, status. Uh, recover. Healing. Cures a cold, sunstroke, or sleep conditions. Okay. So that's, that's neat. That's pretty neat. Uh, we haven't encountered any of them yet. Though we can inflict one of those. Yeah, I'll fight you, why not? I think I'll insta-kill you, too. Yeah, I will, because it's only one enemy. Neat! And, yeah, okay, so now we can just get our PP back. And hopefully, not die. Because dying is bad, children. In case you didn't know that, dying is extremely bad. Uh, how much do I need? No. Okay, we are full, okay. Let's go through this opening and see what evils await. Actually, not many. There's a present here with a hamburger. Uh, I need to throw something away. I got a cold remedy, which I don't need now that I have healing. Let's go ahead and drop that. All it does is clear, uh, is, uh, blah, 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 cure a cold, and we have something to cure a cold, so we don't really need it. We could sell it, but I don't really care about that. We get enough money from, I don't want to do that. We get enough money from Ness's dad and the ATM machine that we don't we don't really need to sell items unless they're absolutely trashy. Or they give us a good amount of stuff. You know what, I'll fight you. There's only one of you. I'll insta-kill you anyway. I'm really worried about taking damage before I enter the actual battle. And that's why I'm I'm being really choosy. Yep, don't want to do that. Uh what about now? Still don't want to do that. There's two of them. What about now? One, there's still two. I want only one. That'll, that'll work. Insta-kill, right? 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 Yeah. That feels good. Okay, 37 experience. Don't really care because I am pretty far from, yeah, I'm really far from a level up, so I shouldn't even try. But we are at the Your Sanctuary location. Oh boy, you finally got here. This is the first Your Sanctuary location, but it's mine now. Take it from me, if you dare. Now, in fact, uh... Yeah. This is really cheap of me, but I'm doing it. I'm really doing it, because I, if I die, I don't want to backtrack. Alright, now the Titanic Ant is really hard. It will steal your PP, it will heal itself, and it will also create shields, physical shields, so your bashes won't do much. But also, behind it, are two Antoids. One of them is hidden behind its body, just barely, and that's pretty annoying. So, I'm going to suggest that since we have a ton of healing items, we don't really need our PP at the moment. I'm going to use PSI Rockin right off the bat to hopefully kill all the enemies on screen, but Titanic Ant. PSI Rockin Alpha hits, did not work on the Titanic Ant, didn't really expect it to, but I did expect it to kill both the Antoids. That is nice. Now we don't have to worry about them bogging stuff down. It also has defense down Alpha, and it will lower our defense for its own bash attacks. So, if it gets a smash attack, you're pretty much dead after it's lowered our defense a bit. Which is really worrying. It really, really is. Um, our, our, my main hope is that it will create so many shields that it will actually run out of PP. That's my hope. Okay, now we need to do up one of my hamburgers here. Tried magnets. Good. I don't really mind. Ate my hamburger. 50 HP. That's pretty good. PSI Magnet again? I'm fine if you keep doing that. I don't need my PP for this. I just needed it for, um, for killing those Antoids. Just keep bashing away. Oh my goodness! Okay, uh, that's something where I need to use my life up. Don't kill me. Okay. Man! That was really, really close. 
I had no idea that he was going to be doing that much damage. Let's just bash again. That was- oh, goodness. How is he doing that much damage to me? Okay, uh... That's bad, because I'm level 10. I should not be level 10 in this battle. I should be, like, level 9. Okay, he's going to 36 damage. Uh, let's see. He's attacking first, so his speed is higher than mine. I have enough hamburgers. I'm going to do up one more, because he's going to hit before that. Yeah, that's good. And 38. I'm, I'm about at max, so that's, that's much better. Now let's attack again. Magnet? That's perfectly fine. Use your magnet all the time. I don't mind. I'll just keep bashing away. Defense down? That's nasty. Ugh, don't do that. Do not do that. T yes! Wow! That was pretty- that wasn't that hard, other than some worrying things, and I still got a level up, even though I just got one. I was- I was legitimately worried, because that guy has proven to be m too tough for me to handle in the past, but he wasn't that bad there. Um, using PSI Rockin' right at the beginning really helped me out. Ness's level is now level 11. Uh, offense went up by 2, speed went up by 1, guts went up by 1, vitality went up by 1, IQ went up by 1, maximum HP went up by 13, maximum PP went up by 5. And here's the first Your Sanctuary location. Ness caught a glimpse of a small, cute puppy. Ness's soundstone recorded the melody of the giant step. That's the first Your Sanctuary location, and there are seven to go. Thank you so much for watching, and next episode, we will set out from Onnet in search of the second Your Sanctuary location. I release new episodes of Earthbound Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays, and if you like this episode, then comment. If you didn't like this episode, then comment and tell me how I can make the next episode so that you would like it. I will see you guys next time for another Pal Plays Earthbound. That, <laughs> that was a close battle. I got really worried there, but we barely pulled it out. And by barely, I mean we had a ton of hamburgers left. But he was doing 40 HP, 40 damage every time. And if he did a smash attack, that would have been the end of me. Man, there are many dangers in the world of Eagle Land, and we have yet to see but a fraction of them. See you guys next time.